Welcome to Pep Talk. <laughs> Everyone needs one with Larone Coach Jennings and Brian Smith discussing Chattanooga from the city to the community you live in, featuring action plays, justifiable results, and keys to success. Brought to you by the City of Chattanooga Department of Youth and Family Development, creating ways for everyone to help parent the city. And now your host, Coach Larone Jennings and Brian Smith. He's one. Thank you so much for tuning in, being with us this evening, and we hope that you will enjoy the show this evening and uh, get your pep talk today. We uh, hope you had a great weekend and uh, enjoying yourself. Uh, what's going on, Brian? Well, Coach, as always, a great uh, pleasure to be here on Groove 93 for Pep Talk Radio, which is parent education programming, and always a, a treat with a great guest coming in this evening, and uh, sometimes we like to say we've got guests that come in from all over the country, and that is going to be the case for this evening, but of course, we're going to start off with one of our local guys here, as we have uh, city, city Attorney Mr. Wade Hinton, who's going to be joining us in just a few minutes, plus we'll also talk with Tristan Egan, who is a representative with the Lexia Technology-Based Reading Program. You may have heard of a lot about that here in the city of Chattanooga as yeah. we have a resurgence in our literacy program. So we're going to be talking with him as he calls in from Boston. Plus, we've also got uh, one of our quarterbacks from Avondale as well as a student from CSAS. We're going to talk with them a little bit later on in the show. As always, the phone number for Pep Talk Radio is 642-9393. Again, that number is 642-9393. Nine three, but kind of a, a chilly, wet weekend. But we're going to warm up things here this evening, Coach, uh, as always. And I think we always like to kick things off here with Coach's opening play. Yeah, you right ready? On. ready to kick things off, and here we go with Coach's opening play. And now it's time for Coach Jennings' opening play. All right, Chattanooga, opening play for this evening. You know, we're really concerned about uh, how we parent our city and encouraging all of us to be a part of this whole process of making an impact on our young people. We're all doing it together. And uh, this reflects how we can make an impact, not only on the, uh, each family, each child, but also on the country. So what I want to make sure we understand, that the state of our country is reflected by the state of our home. And uh, if we take time to really build a strong home with each child, each child, one child at a time, and teach them those principles that will help them be positive, encouraging, uh, teaching them the reading skills, uh, giving them a good education and the strong foundational skills to be respectable to the authority figures in their life at home and beyond their homes and school and in our community, we will actually be building a strong nation uh, in our homes, in our communities, in our churches, in our schools and uh, a city, and a state, and ultimately the country. So, Brian and community, uh, the state of our nation is depending on us as we build a strong home. If each home is strong as we build each child, so will our country be strong. So let us work and build our homes. Let it be strong. That's our opening play for the day, one child at a time. Outstanding opening play, as always, here as we kick off Pep Talk and as we roll right into the first quarter. And we are always excited to have one of our local guys here that has done good and certainly has made a, a big man of himself. And that is uh, certainly the case here for this evening as we welcome in Mr. Wade big Hinton. Man. Yeah, <laughs> he's, uh, he's over there smiling. But uh, Mr. Hinton, now serving as a city attorney for the city of Chattanooga, grew up on Chattanooga's west side where he still volunteers. He has served on the boards with the Community Foundation, Create Here and Stand, as well as been a president of the Urban League of Greater Chattanooga. And uh, Mr. Hinton, before I bring you in here, I love this quote here that was uh, written about you on Chattanooga Soul. I believe you were like their, their June representative a while back. But it says here, he's a prime example of the words that he speaks. We look at our history as a people and a community, history written and rewritten. We decide to be active participants in making history, and that generation comes 
from within. So that greatness comes from within. So great words here, and uh, as always, uh, we, it's a pleasure to uh, introduce folks here that work within the city of Chattanooga, but more importantly, he is working for all of us that are listening. Mr. Wade Hinton, thanks for uh, joining us here this evening on Pep Talk. No, good evening, Brian, and good evening, Coach. Hey, what's great up, to Wade? Be here. Yeah. I, I got to call you Mr. Hinton now. No, I, 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 I don't think so, Coach. <laughs> well, I still he, call you Coach. So. Yeah, he's an attorney, so I just want to make sure I was, you know. I, I just right. want to make sure, Brian, that the listeners know that uh, uh, this same man sent me on so many, maybe run so many suicides uh, and sprints <laughs> back uh, back in my, my basketball days. Yeah. So. People don't know what goes on after the show, too, so yeah, that yeah, might still yeah. happen. Uh, All right. <laughs> well, I have to tell the listening audience, uh, Quay, you, you, you was one of the outstanding athletes that I coached back at Chattanooga School for the Arts and Sciences, and those suicides paid off because you, you helped build that athletic program over there. You were one of the first athletes uh, during that era that uh, laid the foundation to uh, get that athletic program going. So uh, uh, I want to thank you for, for helping me uh, establish that athletic program. No, no, thank you for the leadership. That was, yeah. it was a great time. Great yeah, experience. you had a pretty nice jump or two, man. Yeah. <laughs> pretty smooth. You still got it? I, I, don't, I can't say I still got it, Coach. I, <laughs> I don't know. We'll have to see. All right. Talk to us a little bit about uh, what, what excited you and led you to uh, pursue a, a, a law career way. Did you, know what you, did you know what you really wanted to get into back during that time? You know, I, I, it is a, it's a funny story. And uh, uh, when, I was, when I went to college, I was, I was pre-med. And around my junior year, uh, I decided uh, to, to go into to law. One of the reasons uh, was um, around that time, I think TLC was going through some issues. You, Everybody has seen that story about the bankruptcy, uh, and you had some other artists that were going through some, some things. Right. And at the time, I actually uh, helped bring concerts to my, my campus at Emory University. So I would look at the contracts a little bit, and I would see how little these artists were making. Uh, and I, I, I said, you know, I really like this entertainment type of uh, deal, and I, and I decided to go to law school initially to become an entertainment lawyer. Uh, now, while I was... In law school, I ended up uh, being around uh, a, a group of folks that helped Harold Ford Jr. run his first campaign. Okay. And I saw how young professionals could get active in the community. And uh, so I said, you know what, why, why aren't we doing this in chat? Why, why don't we have uh, that same type of momentum for young professionals and young people being active? And so that actually led me to more of a, a life of service service here. So, yeah. yeah. And, and, and as, as you got involved in, in the, the law field, uh, what did you begin to see as it relates to the other things, the many things that, that it could open up in terms of uh, your career and the careers of other uh, young people in the community? Well, you know, I, I was telling, uh, we have, you know, as you know, interns uh, at, at uh, the city of Chattanooga, and we had a young man intern uh, in the city attorney's office. Yeah. And I was telling him, you know, growing up uh, here, uh, I didn't. I had no appreciation of what a lawyer did. I saw certainly what was on television. I had no idea what a law firm was until I got to law school. Uh, and so, uh, having been exposed to that, understanding that a law degree could be used for many things, such yeah. as you know, uh, I've had a chance to work uh, with the county mayor to to deal with policy issues right. and come up with good ideas, hopefully that could impact the community as well as. You know, try to try to make sure that uh, you know if somebody's been wrong, try to uh, address those issues in, in court as well. Right. Uh, but uh, you know, even today in my my current role, trying to to help bring change uh, to the community and to the city organization. Yeah. So, yeah. And, and you, you worked in uh, with with Miller Martin, a law I did, firm. I what did. was your, what what kind of uh, law did you practice with uh, Miller Martin? What did you focus on during that time? Well, uh, during that portion, I did. Uh, I was in the corporate department. And I did a lot of mergers and acquisitions, a lot of general corporate work, transactional work. Um, at the same time, I had an office uh, still at the county uh, working on uh, civil rights policies for uh, and EEO work for the county mayor. All right. Yeah. Then you transitioned to, was it Volkswagen from there? Uh, yeah. I ended up going to Volkswagen. Um, I was one of, I guess, the first couple hundred employees, <laughs> uh, and uh, which seems like a, a long time ago. Uh, but it was an exciting time, Chattanooga. The momentum was 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 really uh, high, and uh, we we worked, and and uh, as you can see, the facade's doing doing pretty well, and and so I did a lot of different transaction work out there as well. There's some government relations and and uh, some litigation management. 
Yeah. Yeah. And what, what some of your colleagues uh, think and say uh, about your transition and your career as, as an attorney? Uh, were many of them surprised that you chose and pursued uh, uh, the legal uh, field? You know, um, I, I, I don't know if uh, people are surprised. I think I was surprised yeah. more than anything else. <laughs> and, and I say that because I, I remember a story, and, and, and uh, hopefully I don't get too emotional saying this, but I sometimes tell the story of, you remember those graduation cards, announcement cards you put when you graduated from high school? Yeah. Now, for some reason, I thought Esquire meant something of nobility. Uh, so I, I was okay. you know, trying to be a little funny, a little arrogant at the same time. Yeah. And I put Wadrick Allen Hinton Esquire. Had no idea I would become a lawyer. Uh, <laughs> it, and it just happened. I guess God had a, had a plan for me already back yeah. in high school. Um, yeah. But, but I, yeah, I, I didn't know it. My, my friends uh, now are very supportive. I still get, I got a Facebook message last night from a friend I grew up with in the West Side who congratulated me on, on, on the uh, the success. And so, yeah, that, very supportive. Yeah. yeah. Well, I tell you, it's a lot of people are uh, proud of you and uh, very thankful to the Lord how he has brought you through and, and, and using you now as uh, uh, the city Amen. attorney uh, for the city of Chattanooga. Now, now, you, 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 uh, now you are the first African-American city attorney i am so that's history it's a little history yeah yeah that's a little history there a little, a little history to tell me how you feel about that uh, uh in, in terms of the history yeah uh, you, you know i i try not to think about it from that standpoint i, I honestly don't i i certainly uh you know i want to go in and and just do uh a a great job and make the city better you know the mayor burke has a great team yeah. as you, you you're, you're part of that team and so seeing people like you and, and Donna Williams Jeff Cannon and so many others coming on board that really sort of excited me and, and really pushed me to do it um, certainly I, I, I you know I go in there and I, I try to make sure that I'm just doing the best job and making the city better yeah you, you, you gotta be one of the youngest too maybe Maybe, yeah. So you know, I just I just had a birthday last week, so I'm I'm, I'm feeling a little older today. Uh, so I just had the milestone of uh, of forty. So yeah, yeah. yeah. Happy birthday! Thank yeah. you. I appreciate it, Coach. I appreciate All right. it. So, uh, but but I guess with that, yeah, youth. I'm also trying to bring in a different sort of approach. Uh, I was joking with the young man earlier about uh, my time at Arts and Sciences. It was, it was before the internet. Uh, and so, but, but, but What's with that? the, yeah, no, exactly. So, but with the, with this office, I am really trying to push forward, uh, technology and innovation and trying to look at things differently and, 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 and make things uh, as efficient as possible. Yeah. Well, you, you, you and I have been talking about some things and you got some great ideas that we've been kicking around and you've been very, very proactive. And, uh, one of the things that we've been dialoguing about and, and you, have made it your uh, prerogative uh, saying that we, we need to get uh, attorneys and, and your office more proactive about educating. And, you know, that excited me because uh, as an educator, being proactive about teaching our young about what the law is, what it mm -hmm. says, and, 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 of course, knowing what the law is all about, can you can make better decisions. Let's talk a little bit about that. What are some of your strategies uh, in terms of trying to get our, our legal uh, strategists and our legal community involved in uh, helping our young people in the city of Chattanooga being aware of yeah. what's happening in, in our legal field? Well, Coach, I know that that's something that you're you're very passionate about, and and we uh, we I guess we spoke about that before I, I even joined the city. Yeah. Um, and I made a commitment to you that that was something that we could we could work towards, and um, I, I I met with my colleagues in my office, and one of the things we talked about was was trying to to maybe do more outreach. Yeah. I think there's a big sort of veil of secrecy, if you will, with what does the city attorney's office do, and I wanted to try to uh, make us uh, or get us out in the community a bit more. So, uh, one of the things we we are we are doing, uh, we are we're working with the Chattanooga Bar Association, uh, as well as uh, uh, Judge uh, Chris Ussell and and, ju and Judge Rob Filial at the Juvenile Court, uh, and and Boyd Patterson. Uh, we're we're trying to come up with an initiative that that helps with 
uh, something you just said, which is decision making. Yeah. Uh, you know, a lot of um, opportunities and challenges and things happen out of, out of those decisions. And what we're trying to do is get in the hands of uh, young people uh, a, a process in which they can maybe help them make better decisions. Uh, we want to try to uh, inform them about what the law, the ramifications of, of their decisions, even at this young age, what that can mean for them uh, for, for their lives uh, as, they, as they become adults and parents yeah. uh, and, and want to become active citizens. But some of the decisions you can make now could, could maybe impact you uh, depending on the, the types of things. So we, uh, we've been, in fact, we're meeting next week to, even, to, to try to, to get some, some things uh, squared away with that. That's great. And you all will be going into the schools, churches, and various outreach programs, and our centers, our YFD centers. That, that's right. And, and so forth. Yeah, one thing we don't want to do is reinvent the wheel. There are already some great things I know you're doing. And so we, we're going to try to really piggyback on, on those things and, and do a, uh, some partnerships with, like, the Young Lawyers Division, uh, as well as S.L. Hutchins Bar Association to get them active as well. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, you got young people out there that's listening that that may be interested in in the uh, profession. Uh, what what would you say to them? Uh, how do they uh, try to hang out, learn, and uh, maybe shadow uh, individuals that's interested in in uh, becoming an attorney? First of all, I would I would say maybe contact your guidance counselor first, uh, and 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 see if your guidance counselor could just. You know, I would express an interest and ask him or her to uh, contact the local law firm. Uh, when I was at Miller and Martin, I had people shadow me. When I was at Volkswagen, I had people shadow me. And so lawyers are willing to do that, uh, but someone has to contact them to, to make that ask. So I would, I would say if there's an interest there, uh, contact the guidance counselor, uh, and they could contact the law firm like a Miller and Martin or Chambliss Bonner uh, or even – uh, the DA's office, uh, so you can see some things that are happening on the on the criminal side as well as the civil side. Yeah, uh, and and that could be certainly an opportunity to have some exposure. That'd be great. Uh, in 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 this role as a city attorney, I know Mayor Burke uh, and his strategies and and vision to transform government mm -hmm. and uh, uh, his policy making. Uh, how much? Uh, transformation has taken place in, in your role in, in your uh, office uh, to realign city government as it relates to uh, helping Mayor Burke fulfill his vision and uh, transform city government to get where he's trying to go uh, overall with his new vision for the city of Chattanooga. Well, I, I you know, I, I have a, a sort of an overview that I do every month, and I try to place on that overview a couple of things that the mayor talked about during his, his campaign and uh, from efficiency and, and uh, effective government to uh, you know, public safety. So things that we can do in our office to address those issues. But on the efficiency side, uh, one of the first things I did, and you have seen this, is I, I wanted to make sure that, um, as I think historically what would happen is basically if you were in a department, you'd contact the city attorney, yeah. then he would give it to someone in his office to, to, to handle. And what I decided to do was to streamline that, to have one point of contact for each department. So, you know, cut, cuts out the middle person uh, and gets you the information and answers as quickly as possible. So I've created uh, sort of general counsels for each department. Uh, I've actually created divisions within the, the, within the organization as well. Um, and so uh, th those are the types of things that, that we're doing. We're also uh, working, uh, and I know this doesn't sound exciting to the, the, the general audience, but, you know, if, if, if you come into, uh, I think that this, as one of the things I noticed as I review contracts was something as simple as, well, you know, each department has about three or four different contracts. Yeah. And, you know, when you look at the number of departments you have, that, that adds up to double digits or, you know, really 20, 30 contracts, different contracts. And so I said, you know what, let's streamline it. Let's have four different contracts. So we're going through Things like that. I mean, things people right. don't really think about, but it really makes government work that much faster. Uh, and, and so we're, we're working on that. There are some other exciting projects that we'll be unveiling, I think, uh, January and February of next year. Yeah, so. very simplifying things and, and making them work better. Uh, yeah, a absolutely. And then obviously we'll work in, we work uh, to draft uh, legislation uh, with, with uh, the, the mayor's office as well as with, with city council. 
things like the, the event hall ordinance. Uh, so so we, we work on those projects as well. Well, it's really nice having my own uh, uh, attorney. Yeah, we, <laughs> so we actually really been thinking about uh, get you know some <laughs> some revenue and, and building uh, these departments, but we'll we'll see what happens. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So uh, t talk to us a little bit about, uh, we got a few minutes left during this segment. Okay. Uh, give some words of wisdom to the students out there that's listening for you uh, sign off and some words of wisdom uh, to the parents. Just being parent education program. Uh, talk to the students and then close out with the words of wisdom to the parents out there listening. You know, I, I just uh, mentioned this to Courtney, and I think it's very True. As I reach this milestone, I'm reflecting on uh, a lot, and, and I've been blessed tremendously. Uh, but one thing that I, I, I look back on, and I thought so much about what everyone else was thinking about in terms of what, what are they going to say about if I decide to do this, or yeah. what, what are they going to say if I, I, ch I, just, I choose to go into this field or this career? What, what are they going to say if I decide, instead of going to the center, Nothing wrong with the center, but I'm going, I'm going to go. I'm going to stay home and 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 read. Uh, what what if I decide to do Alexia versus Alexia? Then then actually go in and, and do something that is is, is different. And so I, I think we focus and and even as a, as a young person, I focused on what other people were thinking. But the reality is, is you have this tremendous opportunity to live this life right now. You have this moment, seize that moment, uh, and and make things happen. Be curious. Um, I would tell everyone if if you're interested in the law, call someone. Um, call call again. Talk to your guidance counselor. If you're interested in being a doctor, call someone. If you're interested in being a, being a teacher or something else, talk to someone. Ask questions. The people are, are willing to do much more than you than you you think. You just have to be willing and courageous enough, courageous enough to ask those questions. And so that that is something I would tell tell the young people. Yeah. And for parents, uh, I would say just just be. If you're listening to this, this you're probably encouraging your kids. I would just say be that big cheerleader for that for that child, and and know that they're going to make their own path. Uh, it may be a little bit different from yours and what you had planned for them, but but be a cheerleader for them and and support them. Uh, and and that's that's really really it. All right, yeah. ladies and gentlemen, you've been listening to Wade Hinton, the city attorney. For the city of Chattanooga, I'm doing an outstanding job making the adjustments, working with Mayor Andy Burke with city policies and ordinances, resolutions, and uh, the whatever changes that can be made to make city government more efficient and effective, and uh, doing a great job. Thank you, Wade. Thank you, Coach. I appreciate it. Thank you, Brian. Hey, thanks a lot. All right. You're listening to Pep Talk. Everybody needs one. Thanks for being with us this segment. Hey, stay with us. We'll be right back. This is Lerone Coach Jennings and Brian Smith. Stay with us. was days before Christmas and all around Groove 93. Santa's elves were getting ready for the biggest Christmas prize giveaway of the year. Get ready Chattanooga. It's time for the 12 days of Christmas giveaway. Listen for your chance to instantly get your name on Santa's callback list for your chance to win great prizes just in time for the holidays. You can also get on the call list by registering online or through our Facebook page. Now when you call in, you must know the phrase that pays. Groove 93. Grant my Christmas wish today. Then you win. Santa stocking is filled with great gifts for the holidays. Blu-ray DVD players, iPod Airs, City Gear gift certificates, Wendy's gift cards, salon visits, and tickets to the play Hell Has No Fury. That's Tyler Perry's new play. All you have to do is get in and be ready when we make the call. It's the 12 Days of Christmas giveaway. Lock it in to win with Groove 93 WMPZ. Groove 93 and Sitco presents Fueling Good Fridays. Hit the weekend fueling good with Sitco Tri-Clean Gas. Hey, is this Terrence? Yes. Hey, Terrence, how you doing? All right. How you feeling today? Okay, who is this? This, this is Magic at Groove 93. All right. And you know what today is? It's Friday. 
We give away gas cards on Friday. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> Terrence, do you know what the phrase that pays is? I'm feeling good. I am feeling good. Oh, yes, you are. That means that you move right along to the next phase so we can get you this money. All right, so um, I'm going to give you a choice. You can choose envelope one through four. Choose a number between one and four. All right, man, give me number two. Number two. All right, let's open up your envelope, see what we're working with. All right, could you work with $40? Yes, I can. All right. <laughs> All right, there you go. Well, congratulations to you, Terrence. Enjoy your weekend. And uh, tell me what station just made you a winner. We are making your weekends feel good with Fueling Good Fridays. We are Groove 93. And now, back to Pep Talk. Everyone needs one with Larone Coach Jennings and Brian Smith. All right, Chattanooga, welcome back to Pep Talk. Everybody needs one. We hope you're getting yours this evening. Be encouraged no matter what you're going through, what you're dealing with. Life is full of ups and downs. Be blessed and be encouraged and know that God is with you. And uh, you got friends and family that will be a good support system. And don't give up and be discouraged because you can make it through it. So uh, be encouraged and get your Pep Talk today. And uh, we're there for you. Hang in there. Yeah, uh, outstanding. The first quarter there with uh, Mr. Wade Hinton uh, from the city attorney's office. And uh, outstanding young man. And uh, really uh, glad that he gives back to his community and has those uh, words of wisdom. And we're going to be talking with uh, Mr. Uh, Tristan Egan here in just a couple of minutes. But as we always like to do here in the, as we move into the second quarter, it's Coach's Action Play. You ready to get everyone all uh, revved up and ready to go? Hey, I'm ready, Brian. Let's roll, roll with it's it. It's time for this week's action play. Hey, Chattanooga, I want to encourage you doing this action play. Uh, parents, you're leaders as well as parents. And we want to encourage you to not only be a leader that will help your students understand that you're a leader and a parent, and sometimes parents can be very intimidating. And rather than being intimidating, we want you to be empowering. We want you to empower your students and uh, children to be the very best they can be. Help them to be the very best student, the very best person, the very best church uh, person, the very best individual to encourage others to be the best as well. No matter whatever they choose to do, wherever they choose to go, and whatever they choose to be. Encourage them to be the best. Empower them. Affirm them. And encourage them to give their best. Don't intimidate them, but empower them. Affirm them. And encourage them to be their best. That's the kind of leader that we want to encourage you to be. An empowering individual that let others be their best. And encourage them to be their best. You can do it. That's what our children need from their parents. Empower them. Outstanding action play here for tonight's Pep Talk, parent education programming here on Groove 93. And one of the things that uh, we first talked about when we launched Pep Talk Radio was about the outstanding literacy movement that Mayor Burke and, and others have uh, put on here for the city of Chattanooga and bringing in a very comprehensive and uh, rewarding uh, techno technical or I would say technology-based. I can't get that word up. But anyway, Lexia technology-based program, and that's where we have computers in several of our youth and family development centers, and we are helping to educate and make sure that all of our youth here in the city of Chattanooga can read. As we all know, the implications of, of literacy are so high. And joining us here on the phone is Tristan Egan, who is with the Lexia Technology-Based Reading Program. And he's uh, calling in from Boston, who was just here in Chattanooga a couple of days ago. And we invited him to come join us on the show. And, and uh, Tristan, I know you, you live it, you breathe it, you bleed it. And uh, first off, thanks for joining us here on Pep Talk this evening. And uh, I think uh, first and foremost, uh, how's the weather up there? It's cold. Um, we've had our first patch of snow, um, first flurry, about two or three inches. But to be fair, God has been on our side. It's been very nice fall, and winter's just begun. All right, Tristan. Hey, how you doing, man? Good. How you doing, Coach? Good to hear from you. 
You too, man. We really enjoyed you being here. Uh, uh, thank God for you and what you're doing. And uh, with the uh, Lexi Reading Program, everybody made it back safe. And uh, you enjoying the cold weather there in Boston, huh? Yeah, well, making the most of it, Coach. How about that? We're making the most of it. <laughs> <laughs> <Heading by. laughs> Not here. All right. Hey, everybody's excited about what's happening here in Chattanooga and uh, with Lexia, and uh, you're taking it all over the world, huh? Yes, we are. So, um, as you know, we've had tremendous success throughout North America. We're also used in Great Britain. We're used in Canada, Australia. We're now expanding a new market in Korea with the help of Rosetta Stone. As you may have known, Coach, we're now part of the Rosetta Stone family. That's a very exciting for Lexia. Um, they've got some really cool features like voice recognition software that eventually we want to blend into our program. Um, just to give a little bit of history and background and who we are, Lexia Reading, we've been around for 29 years. and uh, We pride ourselves as a mission-driven company. Our founder, Bob Lemaire, his own son, was diagnosed with dyslexia. Now, Bob luckily had the resources to really get his son the best possible care, individualized instruction, so pulling fellows from Orton Gillingham, speech pathologists from Mass General and Children's Hospital, collectively they created a formula for teaching reading literacy to students with varying disabilities. Yeah. And we've expanded that into a resource where it's now available coach to all students anytime, anywhere, any pace. Now and that's really important because you got students, unlike the founder of this company that didn't have the kind of resources or doesn't have the kind of resources that he has and now you all are making it available for anyone that want to and can learn how to read through this technology based approach and Absolutely. this is really exciting for us to try to take it to as many uh, young people as we can and families that we can to provide this type of services to assist with their reading abilities. Yeah, and as you know, Coach, it's not just research-based. This is a research-proven program. We've done a series of third-party independent studies. So in layman terms, it is research-proven. And the people here at Lexia, including myself, we realize, like you do, that teachers and parents can't do it alone. It truly does take a village to raise a child. And Lexia prides itself in playing a role in that process. Yeah. Uh, now, now, talk to us a little bit about uh, how technology is playing such a role in helping education and partnering with educational institutions and advancing uh, literacy and education as a whole throughout our country. Okay, absolutely. So one of the things that's really important to make this successful is actionable data around student performance pinpointing in very precise terms where students are currently struggling. The great thing about Lexia, it then creates customized lesson plans which can be taught by a teacher, paraprofessional like you do throughout your organizations in, in Parks and Rec Coach to basically where they can spend time with the students who need it most, but specifically on the areas where your students need help. Exactly. And we're working with our, our paraprofessional individuals and uh, within our youth and family development centers and uh, retraining them and helping them to understand how important it is to think literacy and education to provide that out of school time to be more strategic in helping our students in schools uh, and our out of school time for those students. And it's really working. And uh, we're, we're, we're working with our schools and teachers to use that time strategically and wisely to help those students who have fallen behind or who are a little bit slow catching up. And uh, we're really working together to make that happen. And, and Lexia is helping us play that major role in doing that. Uh, yep. What do you have to say to those parents out there that's listening and that need to make sure that those students are taking advantage of this time uh, in our youth and family development centers and at home because they can go uh, be at home on the uh, computers and the libraries as well as at our centers or anywhere they can get on a computer. What do you say to the parents that need to take this a little more serious? 
Yeah, Coach, I agree wholeheartedly with, obviously, your mission, your crusade here. I think that youth and family development, now you basically offer an invaluable resource and after-school program. Ideally, our objective as a company and working with many agencies throughout the city of Chattanooga is that students have access to the program. The great advantage to Lexia, it is a browser-based program, meaning it is available on any computer, anytime, anywhere. The other beautiful facet about Lexia Reading, we also offer an additional program with every license called Strategies for Older Students. This is something that has been embraced by parents around the country, where parents can also work on their reading skills, their fluency skills, at the same pace with the children. Um, as I mentioned, this is a program that's truly designed for individualized instruction, regardless of background, regardless of experience, familiarity, etc. So I really think if we all work together with that common goal, with the schools, with agencies like yourself, and with parent involvement and parent investment in the children, we're going to make a big difference. Yes. I am so excited. And I think Chattanooga students are... Uh, and what we're doing together collaboratively uh, in our schools, our centers, our churches, and um, all those who are really involved in other nonprofits. Um, there is no excuse for our students and parents. Uh, there's no excuse. Everyone that want to be literate can be literate in the city, and uh, they can get help and move forward in terms of improving their literacy skills in every aspect. Do uh, you have any final, final and closing remarks, uh, Tristan, uh, as it relates to anything you want to say that will encourage those who are out there listening to be uh, involved and, and, and so forth? I want to encourage those who can help us volunteer to get involved um, because uh, this can help speed the process up to learn how to help those students as volunteers as well. But do you have any closing thoughts or remarks that would help the listening audience understand how important this is? Absolutely. Uh, Coach, I would only say this, is that you and basically the people of Chattanooga have inspired us here at Lexia. We're kind of proud of ourselves to be playing a role in this process. We really believe in what you're doing, this citywide initiative. Um, and we really believe it's going to work. It is something we now want to emulate throughout the country. Um, to expand this going forward. The, the only caveat I would like to add is Alexia is not a program that we leave on your doorstep and walk away. We really pride ourselves on, on making a difference. We want to assure that you get the usage and progress that you deserve and need. And again, the program comes with implementation, an implementation plan, a series of dedicated trainers, support. And again, we've been obviously treated in a wonderful manner throughout our time working in the city of Chattanooga. So I think it's an amazing opportunity and uh, really a gift, as it were, a gift for parents to take advantage of ASAP, as in yesterday. Parents need to take advantage of now. All right. It's Tristan Egan, Boston, Massachusetts. And, uh, hey, you've gotten uh, uh, a promotion, your outstanding job uh, for promoting and, and, and moving around the city and country. Uh, we really appreciate your efforts, and um, thank you for an outstanding job you've done. And uh, well, where, where, where are you? Um, other locations that well, you have? Well, what Coach Wilson was saying is, uh, you know, Tristan has uh, come in. He's uh, uh, taken a look at some of the locations that we have some of these computers installed and has seen and worked uh, closely with our staff here. And I, I just want to let folks know exactly where our uh, computer-based programs are because it is uh, one of those uh, programs where you have to see to believe because it does work. And we really encourage parents to come out and, and, and work with their kids on this as well because we know the, the youth are having a great time. The, it's proof is in the pictures that we post on our Facebook page. But I want to list off our youth and family development centers here real quickly. It's uh, Avondale, Brainerd, Carver, Eastdale, Eastlake, East Chattanooga, Hickson, North Chat, South Chat, Washington Hills, and Westside Center that are all now featuring uh, the Lexia technology-based reading program, and we hope to have them in all of our centers here uh, by the end of the winter. So, you know, it, it's something that folks really have to go out and take a look at, and it really does make a difference. Uh, as, as Tristan has mentioned, they've been doing it for several years, and Coach, you brought it here because you believe in the program as well. 
All right, Tristan, thank you for a good job. You're very welcome. All right. Thanks again. Have a good night. All right, you too. Take care. All right. All right, ladies and gentlemen, you've been listening to Pep Talk, and we're going to take a break right here. This is Lerone Coach Jennings and uh, Brian Smith. Stay with us. We'll be right back. It's magic, and I love to help you get through that work day. Join me weekdays from 10 a.m. until 3 p.m. for the Midday Cafe with the best in jam and old school and today's R&B and your chance to be a big winner with prizes, getaways, and more. Saturday mornings, you can catch me at 11 a.m. for Caring for the Community, brought to you by Blue Cross Blue Shield. Spend your midday at the Midday Cafe with me, Magic, on your station for jam and old school and today's R&B, Groove 93. Groove 93 and Sitco presents Fueling Good Fridays. Hit the weekend fueling good with Sitco Tri-Clean Gas. Hi, may I speak with Josephine Brown? Hey, Josie. Do they call you Josie? (laughs) All right, how you doing today? I'm doing good. How are you? I'm great. It's the weekend. It's Friday. I'm excited. Even though it's raining, I don't care because I feel pretty good today. And I'm feeling good. Too. Oh, she already <laughs> knows what it's about. Yes, I ma'am. Really know. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> she yeah. says I'm feeling good too. All right. Well, we can go on and find out what envelope you like to choose today, Miss Josie. Okay, give me two. Number two. All right, yes, two it is. That's a good number two. I like even numbers. All right, let me ask. You, let me ask you this, Josie. Do you want to go to the envelope, or do you just want to see what's in number two? Let's see what's in two. Let's see what's in two. She said, I don't have time. Let's just get to the point. Let's see what's going on on this Friday. You've been waiting for us to call you? Yes, I have. <laughs> she yes, says, I've been waiting. Every week you've been waiting for us to call, right? All right, let's cross our fingers. Yes, ma'am. In envelope number two. Oh, yes. It is a good yes. Friday, Josie. You want to know yes. how much you have today? How much? One hundred dollars for real for real i'm not gonna fuck right. with you it's one hundred dollars and right. go. enjoy yourself and tell me what station just made you a winner we are making your weekends feel good with fueling good fridays we are groove 93 and now, back to Pep Talk. Everyone needs one with Larone Coach Jennings and Brian Smith. All right, Chattanooga, we're back. We're back again, and you're listening to Pep Talk. Be encouraged. Parent education program. We're trying to parent the city together and encourage our children, our families, We're trying to do it all together, take all of us working together. Nobody can do it by themselves, and uh, we're all struggling uh, one way or the other and having our own ups and downs, challenges in life, and we just need to inspire each other, motivate each other, and pick each other up when when we fall down and, and, and when we're a little bit discouraged. And uh, be inspired, Brian. Nothing inspires us more than uh, bragging about some of the teens that we have here in the city of Chattanooga. And usually as we roll into the third quarter here, we always like to welcome in one of our quarterbacks. And we're doing so this evening as we have Mr. Thomas Battle, who is joining us from the Avondale Youth and Family Development Center. And he has brought with him here in the studio Courtney Brown, who is a junior at CSAS, who's involved in several of the programs at Avondale, as well as his church and volunteers in the community, and uh, also plays a little bit of sports here. We told him we wouldn't pick on him about baseball, but we we might have to. But Thomas, uh, first off, we appreciate you uh, coming in here the, this evening, and thank you, thank and uh, the mic is uh, open here to talk about some of the great programs that you have there at Avondale, uh, including, of course, uh, the Lexio uh, technology-based reading program that you have as well. Oh wait, wait, wait a minute! Now. You said Thomas, the quarterback. I don't, he don't like no quarterback. <laughs> no, man. I protect the, like... the quarterback. <laughs> 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 the offensive line makes it all move. All right, all right, I like that. Thomas. All right. Big dog. All right. Go ahead, Thomas. Brag a little bit. What we got going on in Avondale, all those exciting programs and things that y'all are doing over there, wonderful things. Talk to us a little bit. Okay. Uh, first of all, you know, we have the Lexia program. 
that's doing real nice uh, over at our center, encor- encouraging our kids to read and become motivated with reading. And we're actually getting a great response with that. Um, we also have an exercise program that's been Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. We've had some phenomenal pieces. Uh, we've just won some awards, and I know Brian had something to do with one of those shooting videos and things, so we're actually doing real nice over Is that there. with uh, Carol, boom, 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 yeah, Meredith? That's right, three booms, three Oh, booms. yeah, Carol, I know Carol. She'll get it going. She yes, don't sir. play. Yeah. Also, we have the Avondale Seniors on the Move. Uh, that's a program that takes place on Tuesdays with our seniors uh, in the city of Chattanooga. They get out. They do a lot of different trips. This week they are having a Christmas party. But they come, have a good time, fellowship. That's a great program for those who want to get out on Tuesdays for our seniors. We also have neighborhood meetings taking place uh, the first and third Mondays of every month. So if you stay in the Avondale community, that's a, a, a big help in understanding what's going on. And, you know, if you have problems in your community or things that you want to voice or you have an opinion that you want to state or speak on, come to the meetings because a lot of times you can get things out and, you know, just kind of understand what's going on in your community and and really be become knowledgeable of the things that's going on. Uh, we also have uh, the YLOP program, which is Young Ladies of Power, that takes place uh, every other Saturday. Uh, Miss Joyce Watson, she's the one who heads that now. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it's a real nice program, teaching these young ladies how to be, you know, grow up to be women. Uh, a lot of times in our communities nowadays, you know, that it, it's not such a, you know, people are not teaching our kids the correct way. And this, you know, teach them how to be young ladies and carry themselves correctly. Uh, uh, you know, it, Basically, folks focuses on a lot of education and even, you know, they have classes of etiquette and different things of that nature. So I think that's a wonderful program that we have going on at Avondale. And last but not least, uh, we have the EOCT program, the eye-opening college tours. The college tours will be taking place uh, starting back up in January. So if anybody out that's listening, you know, you have some youth, even middle school kids, we're taking them now on these tours because we think, you know, you start them out young and teach them about college, that makes them push towards the education their education so that's just a couple of programs we got going on at Avondale so I mean you know anything else you guys want to know just feel free to come that certainly is more than a couple and who did you uh, bring with you tonight uh this is Courtney Brown outstanding young man uh he goes to CSAS and he's a participant in Avondale he does a lot of great things in this community very memorable kid and I'm just happy to know him and to be honest you know for you know to have a child this this age He's all you know. He's almost grown, I guess you say, eighteen. But he's 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 doing fantastic things in the community. I let him speak on that. All right, all right. Come on up to the microphone here, uh, Courtney. Hey, Courtney. Good afternoon. How you doing, Courtney? Fine, you? Doing great. Talk to us a little bit about. Tell us uh, what's what school you attend, Courtney? Uh, Chattanooga School for the Arts and Sciences. Chattanooga School for the Arts and Sciences. I was one of the founding teachers at that school uh, mm-hmm. back in 1986. Uh, is it still going strong over there? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. What 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 do you like about that school? Um. Well, with, with arts and sciences, it's it's very like uh, you know, the things that we do there, you know, are kind of challenging to others. I guess you know, as people, I talk to people that go to different schools and I say like, you know, you guys have a lot of homework. Or you know you, you guys get treated like you go to college, and really um, I think it's a good it's a good experience, you know, and um, especially being a junior heading into our senior year, like it gives you the chance to really take in a lot of things that we're headed to in our future, and that's college, and I think they have a you know. That's good. Uh, is it still founded on the uh, Paideia concept? Yes, you sir. All still work on that Paideia uh, philosophy? Yes, sir. Doing a lot of seminaring. Mm-hmm. Teaching you to communicate and express yourself and take debating and yes, sir. yeah yeah uh, that's really good and what all are you involved in at the school Courtney? Um, well, really, I'm just focused on myself in, in class, but uh, I love I love art and things like that. So, kind of outside of school, I, I spend my time writing poetry and and um, I really want to get into photography classes and, and learn more about that, but. It's really my role, I guess, in school. That's good. Well, what do you like about Avondale, the the Avondale Youth and Family Development Center over in Avondale? What what are you involved in over there and what you like about uh, hanging out there at that center? Well, I've been going to Avondale Center uh, since I was, like, this tall. <laughs> well, and, you're not that much taller now. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I've been going there for a really long time. I started off in the uh, summer camp that yeah. they have every summer. And, uh Really, Gerald, he's kind of, you know, 
taught us, uh, well, myself and one of my other friends, you know, he's, he's taught us really to grow, grow older and um, respect elders and, you know, go out in the community and help other people, you know, and really that, that plays a really big part in, in um, when other people are watching because, you know, it really builds character and, you know, they have uh, basketball games and uh, um, the Lexia reading program that's starting up and they also do tutoring. So it's really good for, for kids to come after school to really do something productive instead of, you know, the other things that such as, you know, gang violence and all that. Yeah, that's great. What are your plans for uh, your future? Um, what are you aspiring to uh, be and what do you want to do uh, once you get out of high school? It's funny you say that because I've been thinking about that so much now, you yeah. know, especially turning 18 next month. Uh, that's all I've been. Uh, that's been in my mind is just about my future and I really want to pursue in in art and in writing and photography and painting just sort of like a renaissance man I guess yeah and and um also I would I would take on some some acting some music you know really just being a positive role model in um in the community but I look up to uh Pharrell Williams actually and that's I like to say that's my role model. So I think that I really want to have that type of approach in my career in life. And of course, he's a, a big time producer now. Yes, sir. Okay. So I mean, if I if I got, if I jumped into that field, that that would be really cool. That's great. That's great. Have you started visiting any colleges yet? Yes, sir. Um, I uh, I attend Second Missionary Baptist Church, and every fall fall break and spring break, uh, they have Project Success. And at the end of the week, uh, we go on college trips, you know, all the way to, like, Alabama, um, Atlanta, and just touring different colleges, usually HBCUs. Right. But, you know, really giving us an experience on uh, what's after high school. And I think, you know, every child should really take that in and, and take that opportunity. That's great. That's great. Well, we, we really appreciate you taking time out of your busy schedule, uh, Courtney Brown, to uh, – Come on, uh, on our radio show and talk a little bit about it. We appreciate uh, uh, Gerald Perry, uh, who's leading that charge over there, and uh, Thomas Battle uh, bringing you down. And that kind of leadership helps develop young men and, and the young ladies over there at that center. Uh, what we're looking forward to is you pursue your goals and aspirations in life. So you keep up the good work. If we can do anything to help you on this journey, you uh, you, you let those leaders there know. Uh, <laughs> Yes, sir. Uh, what we can do to help. I will. All right. You got any uh, closing thoughts? We want you to say a word to the young people. Give the young people a, a, a nugget of wisdom, <laughs> and then we want you to give the parents a nugget of wisdom before we close out, okay? Go ahead. Parents. Okay. Um, I think, you know, talking to my peers, I would just say whatever you want to fulfill in life, you should do that. Um, and, you know, never, never accept failure or never settle because – you know, it's always someone behind you wanting you to fail. And I think you should prove those people wrong. And as as parents, we should they should really just be, you know, the support system and to really hold the children up and, and teach them right from wrong. And especially uh, in, a, in a black household, it's different. And, and coming from a negative neighborhood, kids like to, you know, take in gang violence or going in the wrong path with, like, drugs or things of that nature, and I think the parents should really just structure them, keep them in school, and, and have their mind focused on uh, a prosperous life. So. All right. Courtney wow. Brown, thank you for those words of wisdom. Hang in there and keep doing the right thing, son. Thank you. God bless you. <laughs> keep up words like that. You might uh, be taking over uh, in Coach's Action Plays there. That's, <laughs> that's uh, right. Uh, that's, that's some good stuff. So uh, we appreciate uh, Thomas and uh, Courtney joining us here from Avondale Youth and Family Development Center. And always like to uh, love to show the spotlight here on some of our area teens, our area youth, because they are making a difference. And it doesn't matter what part of Chattanooga you come from. There are great soldiers out there that are working and uh, benefiting and uh, proving that our communities are great. As we roll into the fourth 
fourth quarter here of Pep Talk. We just have a few announcements here as we head into the holiday season. And, of course, one thing we want to get the word out is about our holiday hours at our youth and family development centers. And, of course, starting on December 23rd, when school is out, all of our centers will go to the uh, different schedule, which is 10.30 a.m. until 6 p.m., although Brainerd and South Chattanooga are expected to continue with their hours of 9 a.m. until 8 p.m. due to water fitness. Our centers will also close at 2.30 in the afternoon on Christmas Eve, and all facilities will be closed on Christmas Day as well as New Year's Day. And we'll continue with the uh, 10.30 a.m. opening schedule uh, through the holidays until we return back to school on January the 9th. We had an absolutely wonderful and successful day with Maine by 24 Parade where our Cap Boys Chattanooga Ambassadors Program passed out numerous books, and they're going to be doing the same at the Holiday Starlight Parade that's going to be happening at 6 p.m. this Saturday in downtown Chattanooga. Look for the Chattanooga Youth and Family Development Float, as well as uh, out at the Lookout Valley Parade. Our float will be entered into that parade as well. That's at 11 a.m., so a very busy day on Saturday. And on Sunday, another busy day for Mr. Coach Jennings himself, as he is having a, a little bit of a Sunday dinner. It's to benefit the Orchard Knob Athletics Program, and that's going to be happening at the Beth Bistro there at the Bethlehem Center, and that's going to be going on from 11 a.m. until 3 p.m. Uh, dinner is $10, but it's going to a great cause. And, of course, for those who uh, do not know the address of Bethlehem Center, it is at 200 West 38th Street. Also, we would like to uh, let folks know about a free Zumba that is now being offered Friday nights at Hickson Youth and Family Development Center. We just kicked it off last Friday and going to do so again this Friday. And that's in addition to free Zumba on Tuesdays and Thursdays at 630. Our food drives continue at Tyner Youth the Family Development Center, as well as North Chattanooga Youth and Family Development Center. And if you're still willing to donate a toy to the youth in the South Chattanooga area, our South Chattanooga Youth and Family Development Center is still accepting toys for a few more days. That's at 1151 West 40th Street here. And, of course, as mentioned earlier, our outstanding literacy program, Lexia Technology-Based Literacy, wonderful program, great time to check it out, even during the holidays. And that's available at several locations, Avondale, Brainerd, Carver, Eastdale, Eastlake, East Chattanooga, Hickson, North Chat, South Chat, Washington Hills, and Westside Youth and Family Development Centers here. And of course, we want to encourage everyone to tune into Pep Talk next week as well. We're going to be welcoming in the Big Brothers and Big Sisters organization. I've been a big brother myself for nearly seven years. Outstanding organization. We're going to hear from them and about how presence is much better than presence. In other words, being in presence of someone is much better than giving presents, especially this time of the year. Currently, they have 127 young boys looking for mentors in the Big Brother program. We'll talk more with the fine folks from Big Brothers Big Sisters coming up on next Monday night's Pep Talk Radio. And that wraps up the fourth quarter here, Coach, as we head into your uh, final play. All right. Thank you for being with us this evening. But let me encourage you, the final play for the day. Yeah, I think it's very important for us to be strong and educated leaders, and we will produce strong and educated youth. They need us. They need us to model being strong and educated so that they will see what it looks like, what it feels like, and how to be that example within themselves. And once we model that, they can pick it up and experience it and see how it can help them pursue their goals and aspirations being strong and educated. Hey, let's get it done and help them to see what success looks like being strong and educated. Individuals that they can see their futures as they look at us. Thank you for listening to Pep Talk. This is Lerone Coach Jennings with Brian Smith. Thanks for tuning in. You'll hear from us next week. God bless you. You have been listening to Pep Talk with Coach Lerone Jennings and Brian Smith. Brought to you by the City of Chattanooga, Department of Youth and Family Development. Creating ways for everyone to help parent the city. Don't get no better. We gotta change it, yeah. Just you and me.